Hi everyone and welcome to another Figma prototyping tutorial. In this video we're gonna take a look at creating an image carousel that is swipeable and works as an image gallery for your mobile or web apps. This is the final result, this is what we are creating today. If you'd like to reuse this in your own projects, as usual, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store. And now let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do here is select the frame tool, which means pressing F on my keyboard. And then I'm gonna look for uh, under phone, I will choose iPhone 13 Pro or whichever one you'd like. I'm gonna name this screen and then duplicate this frame just so that we have something we can base the width of our elements on. I will also go to prototype settings and make sure that this device right here is enabled. And that means when you actually launch the prototype, when you launch the preview, you're gonna see a, a phone around this, you know, around your screen. So that's better for visualizing the final result. Since we know that our screen is 390 pixels wide, we're gonna make sure that our photo um, takes up you know most of the screen but not more than uh, the screen which means that you know we want to aim for like um, let's say 280 uh, when the photo is expanded and maybe a bit less when it's uh, when it's smaller so these are the sizes we should be you know looking at approximately speaking and that means 280 for the width on the main one and then 230 something like that for the smaller one. I'm gonna move them over here to have them as a guide. And here I have five photos I downloaded from Pixabay, I think, and we're gonna use these as images in our gallery. So for our main photo, for our expanded big photo, we will, we will go, let's go for 270 by 380. So a vertical format like this. I'll actually create a frame around this like this and then remove the rectangle and name this frame photo. We will use just one photo for now and I'm gonna copy this then paste that here within this photo frame. Resize this and position it let's say like this and then I'm gonna turn this to a component. So we have a component called photo then I'm gonna duplicate this, which means I'm gonna create an instance of this component. An instance is basically a copy of the component where whenever you make changes to your component, it is being reflected in your instance. If you'd like to learn more about components and instances, by the way, make sure to go and check out my channel. I did a tutorial on components and instances. So we have this instance of a photo component right here and we're gonna do one thing we're gonna again create another component from this so this is gonna be a component that will contain an instance of another component you'll soon see why I will name this component photo container photo container I'm gonna click this icon over here at the top which will add a variant this variant uh, is going to be called small and this variant the first one is going to be called big i will also then select the whole component and rename this property to size size and of course um, we want to make sure that the small one is actually small which means i will select the photo instance within the photo container component right so you can see that i'm selecting the variant and then the photo inside actually right that's very important and then i will select the scale tool by pressing key on my keyboard you can see the icon changes right here and then i'm going to scale this uh, to a dimension that we mentioned previously would be good for the small version of the photo this is around 230 so let's let's go for like something bigger than 180 I think we could do like 210, right? So you can see we have a photo that is smaller than the container, which is the variant, and we're gonna change that. We will go over here to the frame section and then click resize to fit. This will uh, wrap the frame around the contents, which in this case means adjusting it to the smaller size. Right, so notice how when I make a change here, it's gonna be reflected here, but also what's gonna be reflected is the size, right? So because we change the size, it's gonna be reflected. All right, so we have the photo, 
we have the photo container and the next step would be using the photo container component right here so um, you have to be careful to be using the proper component right now you can see that i have two identical images so go for photo container right not photo i'll then duplicate this so that we get five copies move it like this right so we have five photos right i think we're gonna switch the size of all of these to small so you can see that it changes the size that's not surprising and then we will select all of these and press shift a to add an auto layout around this around all of these photos i'm gonna name this auto layout and for now i'm gonna move it over here and now actually let me show you why we needed this component structure so i will select the photo component and then add a variant and this variant is going to be called just two i will keep this variant at one three four and five so we have three four and five and i'm going to select the second image we have right here command c select the image within this component this second variant delete that select frame and then paste that inside right so we essentially change the photo right i will do something similar here with the third photo remove and paste and then the fourth so remove paste like this and fifth copy remove paste right i will select the we'll go over here to the photos auto layout and then in the photo container under photo right so we are here i'm going to change this to two similarly here three and then here that would be four and the last one again select the photo component within the photo container component and then select five so we get five different photos and now when i select the photo container and change the size from small to big you can see that we get you know it expands like this and then we also want to make sure that all these photos so i'm just going to press command and then click on each of these so that i select photos directly um, under constraints they are set to scale and scale right so that this means that these images are going to scale down with these variants you're going to see everything you see here is going to be reflected here as well because if we don't set this to scale we keep this at center center for example you can see that this right um, rock is being cut off and we want to make this you know all visible right so just make sure this is set to scale now the next step would be again creating frame using the frame tool and the dimensions of this frame will be 390 so 390 by 380 so let's do that 390 by 380 so almost a square right i'm gonna name this image carousel or image slider no let's say image carousel slider and then i'm gonna copy this or actually command x and then paste that here i will center this vertically and then just move it over here and set the constraints to center and center. Also, I'm gonna select the first container, the first, uh, the first photo container, and then change the size from small to big. So that's the first, that's the first photo, right? And also, you can see that these photos are being moved to the top. We obviously don't want that. We wanna keep them at the center. So I'm gonna select under auto layout. I'm gonna change the alignment to left center right so now you can see that all of these are in the middle i will also remove the background from this just make it um, almost invisible for now so just just very slightly opaque and then i'm just gonna make sure this photo is centered so that would mean moving it so that distances are identical so two more pixels to the right and that would be centered right 60 and 60 cool and then we have this image cursor slider and now we're just gonna turn this to a component yeah, an image cursor slider component i'm gonna uncheck clip content just so that we can see all the photos and then i'm gonna create a variant and then three more so we get five variants in total again let's go for proper naming so for one for on the first one two three and so on for 
And then I'm gonna also uncheck clip content so that we can see the contents. And um, I will select the second variant. And then under the photo container, I'm just gonna click through a few times and I'm gonna change the big component property to small, right? And then I'm gonna select the whole photos all the layout and just move it like this. Select the second one, of course, and turn that to the big version. I will then also make sure these are aligned precisely. You can see they are aligned now and, and you'll probably can guess where this is going. And just a small trick I can think of right now is actually to calculate the amount by which you have to move this photos auto layout Take a look at the, the X value here and then the X value here. You can see that here it's 60, whereas here it says 174, minus 174 that is. So the difference is 234. So now when in the third variant we select the photos auto layout and just add 234 or actually subtract 234, so minus, minus 234 and then minus 234 again 234 now when we turn this to a small version and this one to big it should be the same right because it moves by the same amount dimensions are identical and therefore you can use this for your calculations so again i can select the next one and then just keep subtracting 234 until i get to the correct position at 234 and also change variants over here and similar here minus 234 minus 234 minus 234 and minus 234 and this one will be big whereas this one will be small right so all of these are now positioned correctly which means we are ready for prototyping let's select the photo first photo container then go to prototype and connect this to the second variant and we're gonna say on drag change to property one two and this is gonna be smart animate and it's gonna be 300 milliseconds 300 milliseconds then again I'm gonna select this photo container and now I can actually click and drag both here to the first version right so on drag but also I can click and drag or tap and drag or swipe, I guess, to another variant. So again, on drag. Then similarly here, if I click on the photo container of this photo, connect that to this version, again, on drag and on drag, and then here on drag and here on drag. Make sure everywhere it says Smart Animate, right? And finally, in the last one, you can only drag back to the previous version, so on drag. And now the final thing we do is actually select the image cursor slider component and press enter and then check clip content so that everything is kind of masked by the variants. Then we will just remove the fill from these variants. Then go over here to assets and search for image cursor slider, drag and drop that onto our screen. We're gonna center this and we're gonna launch the prototype and see, kind of test our result and see if this is good to go, which means clicking on. I'm gonna launch the prototype now, and this is the final result. When I click and drag, you can see that I'm swiping through these photos, they change sizes, and I can go back and forth, except for the very first and very last images, but I can just navigate through this very smoothly. If, for example, you, you'd like to change, you know, appearance of these photos, for example, you'd wanna make these corners rounded. You can just select these, this photo container, add some rounding, let's say like 16 pixels, press clip content, and you can see the change is gonna be reflected across, across everywhere, right? You can now even reuse this multiple times, like, um, like for example, when I do one more here, you can see that it's being shown here. Of course, because we have the scrolling disabled, when we enable vertical scrolling, you can see that you now have two uh, sliders that you can swipe through and navigate through. And it also goes without saying that you can actually modify these individual photos. For example, um, let's just say I wanna put a circle on this photo, a red circle for some reason, whichever reason you'd like. 
I'm gonna also set this to scale and scale. You can see that it's gonna be reflected here. And then also when I go through these photos, you know, any changes I make on these variants with these photos, they are also gonna be reflected right here. And that's it. That's how to create a slider like this in Figma, an animated interactive slider. As usual, if you'd like to reuse this in your own project, check the link in the description. Thank you for watching. I would appreciate you leaving a like if this video helped you and also even subscribing if you enjoyed this type of stuff and if you'd like to learn more about Figma, UX and UI design and about design in general. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.